in this presentation we will discuss on the concept of uh, one transistor dynamic memory cell so this is the circuit diagram of a uh, one transistor dynamic memory cell since it's comprising of only nmos uh, transistor i can uh, call it as an nmos design type of one transistor dynamic memory cell it is called as one transistor because only one nmos transistor is present in the entire design if i want to design uh, it for several number of bits here it will be designed for one single bit if i want to design depending upon the number of bits or multiple number of bits i can just cascade this particular uh, circuit any number of times depending upon the number of rows and number of columns number of bits so here what happens is uh, since it is an uh, nmos transistor uh, it will be having a gate terminal drain terminal and uh, source terminal so whatever the signal we are going to apply for the gate terminal of uh, nmos transistor it is going to decide whether the transistor is uh, turned on or turned off so here you have a row select line as well as a column select line so column select line i have marked it as r or w which stands for uh, either read operation or write operation so both of them will be mutually exclusive if a read signal is 1 write signal will be 0 if a read signal is 0 write signal will be equal to logical one state if i am asserting read as equal to 1 it will be performing read operation if i am asserting write as equal to 1 it will be performing the write operation so now in this particular diagram if i assert the column select signal or the w signal as equal to say logical one state and if this row select signal is asserted with the logical one state so obviously it will be equal to a on position of a nmos transistor since your column select line is carrying logical one state this side of the diffusion layer will be having one so i am having one applied as an input now it is applied to the transistor which is turned on because of the gate terminal equal to logical one state so i can replace it with the closed switch and whatever the output here i am going to have it is nothing but the full logical one state so i am obtaining the output as equal to logical one state at the output terminal so some sort of charge will be stored in the capacitor that is cm so what happens in this case is now the charge is stored in the capacitor cm which has performed the right operation so this is nothing but the right operation in a single transistor or one transistor type of dram cell now the right operation is uh, performed i have to perform the read operation next since it's a dynamic ram uh, so there will be uh, the presence of the data or uh, the charge in the form of charge it will be stored in the capacitor uh, cm so whatever the data is there as it is stored in the form of a charge the data is available only for a certain duration of time interval uh, say for a time lapse of one milliseconds once this one milliseconds or less than one millisecond uh, duration for some kind of designs it lapses whatever the data is stored in the capacitor it will be lost it is no longer available in order to perform the read operation so in order to avoid this particular drawback we are supposed to perform the periodic refresh operations so i have to make sure that before one millisecond of a time lapse i am performing the read operation or i am performing the refresh and i am going to read the data in the bus or the column select line so whatever the charge is stored over here now when i make the read signal as equal to one once again so whatever the charge is stored if i am making this row select signal still as equal to logical one state so this is one so i am having the transistor turned on because of row select signal equal to 1 so it is behaving like a closed switch so the particular data will be read in this particular column select line so this is how it is going to perform the read operation now what about the design configuration so you are having one transistor present that's why it is named as a one transistor type of dynamic memory cell one more concept i need to remember that until and uh, unless the time duration of one millisecond has lapsed the data will be retained as it is once there is a lapse of one millisecond 
no longer you will be available with the exact data what is stored in terms of a charge in this capacitor cm so whatever the data is there it is read from the capacitor cm by detecting the charge on the capacitor cm provided the row select value is kept under a logical one state or higher level so whatever the cell arrangement we are going to take into consideration for a one transistor dynamic memory cell it will be bit complex what is, then what will be the solution in order to decline this complexity the solution is here you can see this is the diffusion part so it is an uh, nmos uh, transistor so obviously it will be having uh, n type of uh, diffusion so this diffusion right side what you are going to see it has to be extended a bit so this extended diffusion area will be comprising the source of the fast transistor the source of the fast transistor is comprised in this particular diffusion area so i am going to connect one capacitor cm so i have to make sure that the diffusion capacitance so that particular diffusion capacitance if i designate it with the term called as cd it will be very very less when compared with the gate to channel capacitance when compared with the gate to channel capacitance the drain sorry the diffusion capacitance will be very less or in other terms gate to channel capacitance will be higher when compared with the diffusion capacitance so i have to create a significant capacitor so this particular capacitor is created by making use of a polysilicon plate over the diffusion layer so if you see the stick diagram once again i'll be explaining in the stick diagram also here you can see two times the diffusion layer is crossing a polysilicon we have already learned that whenever there is a crossing of diffusion with the polysilicon layer there will be an automatic formation of a transistor depending upon in, on which type of uh, diffusion layer the polysilicon has crossed if it is n type of diffusion crossing a polysilicon there is an nmosfet formed so now if you see this particular diagram there is only one nmos transistor available which means that there should be one time crossing of a polysilicon layer with respect to the n type of diffusion so i have considered the row select line as a metal line you can choose according to your uh, wish so the reason for uh, not selecting this row select line as a diffusion line is because i want a transistor to be formed over here since i have chosen this to be a diffusion layer if two times i am using a diffusion layer for row select also for the column select also there will be two times crossing of a polysilicon layer which yields to a two nmos transistor so in order to avoid that i have chosen the row select line to be a metal layer and column select layer uh, line to be a diffusion type of layer so now there should be a formation of transistor so from the row select there is a gate terminal so from the transistor uh, for this particular transistor formation from the row select i have to draw a polysilicon because this is a polysilicon layer so here this is nothing but this should be a polysilicon layer this should be a polysilicon layer and this one as well as this one should be an n type of diffusion layer so that's what we are seeing over here row select line i have uh, used a metal layer and uh, column select line i have made use of a diffusion layer once again so in diffusion understood that it is n type of diffusion so this is what i am supposed to make now so if you look into the stick diagram that should be one and most transistor formed so the vertical layer over here is a polysilicon layer so this represents a polysilicon layer it should cross n type of diffusion so that this transistor is formed so it has crossed n type of diffusion so this transistor is formed so now i want the capacitor cm to be displayed over here so capacitor cm can be designed uh, by creating a significant capacitor using a polysilicon plate over a diffusion area so polysilicon plate is this one so for the plate i am using a polysilicon layer and it has to cross the n type of diffusion so this particular component what you are going to see over here so this polysilicon crossing the n type of diffusion this is nothing but the representation of the capacitor cm so cm is represented just 
cm is represented just like your transistor itself so whatever the transistor you are going to find that is nothing but the polysilicon crossing the n type of diffusion so this is transistor so if i mark this as transistor t that transistor is nothing but represented using a polysilicon crossing a diffusion layer so now if you see the cm usually it will be formed like a three plate um, structure so one end will be given to the vdd another end will be given to the ground level so that will be a central layer which is called as a substrate layer so it is a three plate structure so parallel plate capacitor what you call it as so with all these careful design uh, we are uh, supposed to construct the one transistor type of dynamic memory cell so there will be no static uh, power but there must be an allowance for switching energy during uh, the performance of either the read or the write operation so if i concentrate on the concept of uh, leakage current mechanism so the leakage current mechanisms are uh, going to deplete the charge stored in this particular uh, capacitor uh, cm and thus the data will be held only for a certain duration of uh, time what i have uh, designated it in terms of 1 millisecond or it will be slightly lesser than 1 milliseconds therefore uh, we must perform a periodic refresh operation uh, reading the cell will be a destructive operation and uh, that the stored bit must be rewritten every time it is read so these are the consideration which i need to keep in uh, mind uh, because the cell arrangement is a bit complex over uh, the arrangement of one transistor type of dynamic memory cell and one additional thing what you have to remember in case of one transistor uh, dynamic memory cell is apart from the formation of one transistor there is a formation of capacitor layer cm also which is nothing but i am making use of a polysilicon crossing a diffusion layer in order to designate the capacitor cm so hope you understood the concept of one transistor dynamic memory cell here we have used the design concept based upon uh, nmos design rule or nmos design style wherein i have made use of only nmos transistor it is called as a um, one transistor dynamic memory cell because of presence of one single nmos fit then what are the distinct operation it is going to perform and what is that uh, uh, lapse of 1 millisecond and what is the importance of performing the refresh operation periodically in case of dynamic memory cell hope you understood this concept thank you for listening